Hey, Remar Nurses. I am here in Atlanta. Remember, I got on earlier. So we're going to be doing Monday motivation on location here. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me right now. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Let me know everything is good. We are going to be going over this book, Quick Facts for NCLEX. As Monday comes in, this is a perfect example of how Mondays can be unpredictable in nursing and unpredictable in life. And when you face those challenges, the thing that keeps you going is your routine and your schedule. Thanks so much. The thing that keeps you going in nursing is your routine and your schedule. When I had an unpredictable shift on my progressive care unit, the thing I had to fall back on was, okay, Regina, what are the things that you know you have to get done? And so even today, I could be like, ah, forget Monday motivation. No, I want to be here because we are, we are in the season now where nursing students are getting ready to transition into, and this is the thing, during the next couple months, this is, this is the highest percentage that um, we see nursing students passing the NCLEX. So in the upcoming months, this is when nursing students do their very best on the NCLEX. Around the holiday time, October, November, December, mm -mm. NCLEX rates go down, right? Even in the late summer, August, September, October, not as high. So last year, around this time, nursing students were doing way better. So I want to be consistent. So we're going to talk about some stuff here, okay? And the idea is that some of you are using Quick Facts and you are pairing it with the free trial of the V2. That's perfect. That's perfect. If you don't have the paid version of the V2, you can at least do the free trial. You can at least do the free trial because then you're going to get lecture information. You're going to be able to take the quizzes and it's going to give you what we're talking about today is just that routine, that routine. No matter how crazy my Mondays are, y'all know I'm going to be here with y'all on Monday, right, to study. So we got about uh, 200 nursing students, so we're going to get started. Actually, if you have Quick Facts for NCLEX, this will be great for you. If you don't have Quick Facts for NCLEX, this will show you whether you need this book or not, because you should be putting the comments on the screen very fast, very fast. So let's get into it, okay? All right. Question number one. And I don't have many questions for you guys. I'm not going to keep you guys long, but good night, good night, good night, everybody. Here's my first question. First comment on the screen. I want to see it. From Quick Facts, from Quick Facts, from Quick Facts. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to talk about, um, I'm not even, do I need to give y'all hints? <laughs> Let's go over, um, I like this one a lot. It is Wilson's disease, all the way in the back of Quick Facts. So in Wilson's disease, the body is unable to remove extra what? In Wilson's disease, the body is unable to remove extra what? What are we saying? It's in Clex passing time. And that's one of the reasons why I love this book. And I take it with me everywhere I go because I can just put it in my purse. And when I'm out studying or out tra traveling, you guys see I'm in the Delta Lounge, just packed in here. Got my quick facts book. Copper. Copper is the right answer. Great job. Hey, how'd y'all know that? Y'all got y'all books out? Okay, I'm going to quit giving that. I'm going to quit giving the subject. Next question. Um, are proton pump inhibitors, are proton pump inhibitors chewable? Can you chew proton pump inhibitors? That's some pharmacology for you guys. Can you chew, come from the pharmacology section. Hmm. Quick facts. Can you chew proton pump inhibitors? Good. I couldn't get, couldn't get you on that one. Do clients with, next question, the correct answer was no. You guys got that, okay. 
do clients with COPD have mm, low oxygenation levels or high oxygenation levels? Do clients with COPD have low oxygenation levels or high oxygenation levels? What do you guys say? We are studying. Ah, okay, okay. So I got some. I have my top nursing students show up. Y'all have not gotten a question wrong yet. Low oxygenation levels. Good job. Remember, because it's that carbon dioxide, right? That drives the respirations. Mm. Okay, let me find something tricky. Mm. Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. When a nurse washes her hands with soap and water, does that kill bacteria? What do you say? When a nurse washes her hands with soap and water, does that kill bacteria? We talk about hand washing all the time. Oh, I got some mixed answers. Some people are saying yes. Hand washing kills bacteria. Some people are saying no, it doesn't kill bacteria. But what is the right answer for NCLEX? This is where it's at. Correct answer is no. No, it does not. It reduces the bacteria on your hands, but it does not kill bacteria. I got to keep moving on. Okay, next question. Mm. This, this actually comes from the V, this actually comes from the V2, my NCLEX lecture, but I'm stealing it for this. If a patient has a tension pneumothorax, if a patient has a tension pneumothorax, will their blood pressure be up or down? If a patient has a tension pneumothorax, will their blood pressure be up or down? Just because I was looking at that earlier today. So I'm asking you guys. Okay. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Too. Oh, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. What do y'all say? Patient has a, you know what a tension pneumothorax is. You have to know that first. And then is the blood pressure up or down? Mm. Okay. Ah. I see several incorrect answers. And that's okay because I'm going to explain um, and I want you to explain too, if you got it right in the comments, the correct answer is down. Blood pressure will be down. Remember, attention pneumothorax is that medical emergency that you need to know for NCLEX. And so because you're not going to be able to breathe appropriately, you have some sort of trauma in your, you know, pleural area, you got stabbed or, you know, you got a gunshot wound or you fell, your body's going to do what? What does your body do when you have a major trauma to it? Your body goes into what? Your body goes into shock. And so your blood pressure is going to go down, 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 down. And the heart rate to compensate will go up. Okay. Remember that tension pneumothorax. I don't know the page it is for V2, but it is in our um, respiratory overview. All right. Mm. Oh, this question comes from the clinical skills section. When a nurse is turning a patient in the bed, okay, so your patient's bedridden, you're turning them in the bed, what height should that bed be? Let me give you some clues. Should it be knee height? Should it be at the waist? What do you think? When a nurse is turning a patient in bed, what height should that bed be? I didn't give you the answer, but I see some people that have it. Ooh. These are the fundamentals. Mm. Correct answer is elbow height. It's the height of the elbow, yeah the height of the elbow the waist is too low yep yep okay um 
This comes from Quick Facts, right? During post-mortem care, during post-mortem care, that means after the patient passes away, should the nurse, um, how can I say this? During post-mortem care, should the patient receive a full bath, okay? Should the patient's body receive a full bath during post-mortem care? And this is something that we would tell the nurse's aides to do when you're preparing the body for, a mor for the morgue. What would you say? This is in this book. Let me go to the section. Post-mortem care. Yay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, good job, good job. Correct answer is split up. Okay, so correct answer for NCLEX guys is going to be no. Nope, only clean the visibly soiled areas. And what's the reason why? What is the reason why we would not want to give a full bath? Because it kind of seems like that would be the right thing to do, right? But what's the reason why you wouldn't want to have the nurse's aide give that patient a full bath? I think I, I see some stuff on the screen about it. Because what is going to happen to the body after the person is deceased? The body is going to get what? Call it like rigor mortis, right? It's going to get very stiff. And so... The thing that is the priority is not, not making sure that the presentation is clean and all that stuff because the body will need to be as soft as possible to be able to move, move it, right? So here's, here's the priority for, um, for the body. So here it is. We do not give it a full, and I'm reading, um, this is page 60 of my book. Do not give the body a full bath clean visible areas only. Also, raise the head of the bed 30 degrees and place the palms downward to prevent discoloration, okay? If the patient is supposed to have dentures in their mouth, put those dentures in. Put those dentures in very quickly to form the mouth because once the rigor mortis sets in, it's going to be very tough to get the jaws open and put those dentures in okay um id the body make sure it's the right body maintain vital organs skin integrity also this remove any tubes remove any ivs okay um and then uh, that's it all right Okay, let's go on. Let's do the next question. If a patient is getting a chest tube placed into them, if the patient is getting a chest tube placed into them, are they awake or are they unconscious when that happens? Think about the the procedure of getting a chest tube placed, is your patient awake or are they unconscious? Which one? And it's kind of a critical thinking question. All right. Um, it's kind of a critical thinking question about it because you have to think about the implications of them being sedated. So what do you guys think? Ah, the majority, uh, a lot of people on YouTube are staying awake. A lot of people on YouTube are staying awake. The correct answer actually, though, is the patient is awake. <laughs> so you got it right. Patient is awake. Good job. And the reason why is because these patients already have an issue with what? They're getting a chest tube. So they have an issue with their, with their breathing. Yeah, they have an issue with their breathing. So... Do we want to sedate them fully and make them unconscious? No, we don't. Because coming out of anesthesia requires you to have some good lung capacity, some good lung um, you know, potential and breathing. 
nobody wants to put somebody who has respiratory issues under sedation. Now, should we, you know, make sure that they have some pain control? Yes, locally, but we don't want to put that patient a, a, asleep. That's why a lot of um, patients who need surgeries, a lot of patients cannot get surgeries that they need because they don't have the lung capacity for it, or they're smokers, you know, like my dad, um, you know, my dad smoked cigarettes, and he needed to get a spinal surgery done, and the doctor said, no way. I'm not doing surgery on you because you're a smoker and I can't put you under and then have you not be able to wake up. So it's that same principle with uh, a patient who has a chest tube. Okay. So remember that in practice, that's what we tell our patients. They have to quit smoking because it hurts them in more ways than one. Okay. Um, ah, when you are using hand sanitizer or alcohol-based hand rub like this, I carry some on my purse like this, right? How many seconds do you have to rub your hands for when you are using alcohol-based hand rub? How many seconds do you have to rub your hands for? Infection control, Infection control, okay. All right. And I am going to keep on going. Ah, very good, very good. Correct answer, 15 seconds. 15 seconds, at least 15 seconds. Now, that was, that was my final question. But do you guys want to do a couple more? Let me know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure um, if the audio is good, if you guys are able to understand me. It seems like it's very loud in here, but you guys are answering the questions pretty quickly. So I, I reckon things are going, things are going good. Okay. Okay, more. Okay, here we go. More. Oh, um, okay. Which patient, which patient is the priority for the nurse? The patient with a new fever or the patient with a decreased level of consciousness? Which one? Who's the priority patient for the nurse? The patient with a new report of fever or the patient who has a decreased level of consciousness? What do you say? Well, it's a little, ah, it's a little critical thinking here. Are you worried about a fever or a decreased level of consciousness? What do you say? This book, um, Quick Facts for NCLEX, you can get this from my website, remarnurse.com. Remarnurse.com. The correct answer is the decreased level of consciousness. Yes. And I'm I can I'm trying to understand why you might think it's the fever. Maybe because I said it's a new fever. But with fever, remember what type of issue is a fever? Is it an airway, breathing, or circulation issue? If we're talking about fever, airway, breathing, or circulation. I'm going to have to go with a circulation issue um, because fever, the, you know, if we let it go on, fever is going to produce what? Dehydration. It's an inflammatory response. So the patient might have an illness, a sickness, a virus, a bacteria, right? But if we talk about a decreased level of consciousness, if my patient's mental status is changing, if their awakeness is going down and they're drowsy and you come into your room and your patient's slumped over like, you're concerned. I'm very concerned because I don't know if my patient is what? My patient was breathing or not. So a decreased level of consciousness, you wanna see that first. Another reason for this, because some people are saying, well, 
what if they already had a decreased level of consciousness and but the person has a new fever okay so even still if my patient has a fever and i don't go see about it right away what's the worst thing that can happen to my patient sometimes we have to think about prioritization a little bit differently um, than just airway breathing circulation so let's just draw it out right if my patient has a fever and it's a new fever let's say we have you know a baby and the baby has a fever and it's a new fever and i don't do anything about it what's going to happen to it what's going to happen to the baby what's going to happen to the fever right the fever is going to get higher okay and it's going to get higher and then the baby will start to have what some people are saying it okay seizures because we're, we're talking worst case scenario and the baby will have a seizure how long can seizures last from a fever how long are we going to be expecting a seizure to last mm, what a couple minutes a couple minutes and then the seizure is going what seizure is going to stop um and then the baby may have a repeat seizure if that temperature is not treated. But how long is this going to take? How long is it going to take for a baby to have a fever from I mean, a seizure from a fever? It'll take a while. I'm a mom of three. My kids have fevers, especially my girls. For some reason, my girls have fevers all the time. Not so much my boys, but the girls have fevers. 104 fevers, right? And then, and then you know, the, the fevers go on for days. But if my patient has a decreased level of consciousness and it changes, what's going to happen to my patient with the decreased level of consciousness? What happens to patients when they have a decreased level of consciousness? And, and, and I want you to think about in time because fevers, fevers and seizures, you have a seizure, right? Based on a fever. And it's a response to the fever. It's not anything that's wrong with the brain. The brain is fine, but the body is trying to cool itself off, right? But Talk to me about the level of consciousness because I want to move past it. I want to move past the, the seizures, the rapid seizures from a fever, right? With decreased level of consciousness, you are going to have a respiratory component to that. You're going to have the patient not being able to get the oxygen they need. When a patient has a decreased level of consciousness, right, and it keeps going, then it's going to go into respiratory problems. It's going to be called a coma. What do we do when we have patients who can't wake up, who have a decreased level of consciousness? What kind of treatments do we have to do for them? We have to put them on a what? On a ventilator that breathes for them. So when you talk about, when you talk about a fever or decreased level of consciousness, we're looking at the worst of the worst that could happen to them. So we're putting up a seizure versus a ventilator. Seizure versus a vent. And so who do we need to see first? The vented patient. I think this was the vented patient, okay? But I think that was good. I'm glad we talked our way through that. All right, I'm moving on. Hmm. Let's do this, let's do this. Who should the nurse see first? Because I like this priority. Who should the nurse see first? A patient with tuberculosis or a patient with AIDS? <sighs> Give me your critical thinking. Who should the nurse see first? The patient with TB or the patient with AIDS? Not HIV, AIDS. And, and let's just, um, let's put it in this context. The nurse has both patients. So you get an assignment, you have a patient with TB and you have a patient with AIDS. Who are you going to see first? Okay. 
Why are y'all picking why are y'all picking tuberculosis? What's the concern? What's the concern with tuberculosis? The correct answer is AIDS. Can somebody tell me why AIDS is the better answer? What's the issue with AIDS? AIDS is the right answer. Tell me why. Mark Mark just brought me this. I have no idea what it is. Pineapple, something with pineapple. Mm. Yes, I saw it. So when you have a patient, and so this is this goes beyond this goes beyond airway, breathing, circulation. Yeah, we are worried about we are worried about um, infection control here. This is a safety issue. This is totally safety. If I have a patient who is immunocompromised severely like a patient with AIDS, I don't want to introduce new contaminants to that patient. I don't wanna put that patient at risk. And so if I go into a room with a person who has tuberculosis, even if I put on all of my personal protective equipment, my PPE, right? We're talking about an airborne condition. We're talking about an airborne condition. So if I mess up even the slightest and I go into that patient's with AIDS room, oh my goodness. Or if I tell my nurse's aide, I need the vital signs in the TV room. Well, I need the vital signs on everybody. And I don't tell that nurse's aide to go to the client with AIDS room first. I, as the nurse, have failed. Okay, I as nurses failed. And we have to remember this with, with NCLEX. It makes no sense during the exam for us to sit there and kind of and, and waste our time. We have five hours. Waste our time saying, well, why did they ask me this? Or it shouldn't be this. It should be that. Or, you know, I didn't study that. You know, because that's, that's not what this exam is about. This exam, this exam is about you being able to navigate unpredictable situations, okay? Navigate experiences that you haven't been in because that's what nursing is. You're never going to get two of the same days in nursing. Never, never. You are going to have new experiences every day. That's why nurses burn out quickly. And I'm just keeping it real with you guys. When you are on TikTok or Facebook, whatever, and you talk about nurses wanting to quit, it is because the challenge of being a nurse is constantly having a cycle of stressful new experiences that you haven't balanced your, your life with. So NCLEX tries to simulate that. And so they give you difficult scenarios and they just want to see how you think. They just want to see how you think. And with next generation NCLEX, you can expect more of that. You can expect more, um, I don't even know how to put it. You can expect more assignments that don't really typically happen or make sense, but they want to test you to see where your safety mind is, right? So I say all that to say is that if you're in a scenario and you are thinking to yourself, well, that doesn't happen in the real world, with NCLEX, it's still a separate world, right? NCLEX still is its own world that you have to pass this situation first before you can go into the real world. This is the gatekeeper. The NCLEX prevents you from hurting somebody in real life, all right? But we see um, we see that you are able to at least have the conversation. I, I, and I love the conversation. Okay, let me move on. All right. Mm. All right, let's go to pharmacology. Let's go to psychiatric medication. Is weight gain a side effect of an atypical antipsychotic. 
is weight gain a side effect of an atypical antipsychotic? Okay. The psychiatric overview page looks like that. And it's really important for you to spend some time with the psychiatric medications. If you know the ones in QuickFacts, you will do very well on the exam. Psychiatric medications, uh, we go over five classes. There's really only five classes that you need to know for NCLEX. They are the benzodiazepines, the, um, the antidepressants, right? You need to know the atypical and typical antipsychotics. And what's the last one? Oh, Lord, there's five. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. Oh, and the phenothiazines, which that's the atypical. So here we go. That's it. The MAOIs, the antidepressants, the SSRIs. Yeah. The tricyclics, the atypical, and the typical. How many is that? Yeah, four. Okay. So I want to read about the atypical. The atypical anti antidepressants are called the, um, oh, that's right, anti-anxiety. Oh, all right, so the atypical um, psych drugs, these are known as the second generation, the second generation. And so you have here clonzepine, risperidone, right? Are we a pre -prazole? These ones right here. And so what we want to remember about these drugs is that these drugs are very popular now because they don't have the tardive dyskinesia, the tardive dyskinesia that we see in the first generation or the typical, right? So they're very popular for that reason. But the second generation for NCLEX has the metabolic changes. So weight gain. So they're going to change the way you look right? Weight gain, they're going to change your cholesterol, giving you high cholesterol, which puts you at risk for a stroke. Or they're going to make you have diabetes mellitus, all right? Type 2, type 2 diabetes mellitus. So even though the second generation are more popular, there's side effects and there's teaching that has to be done with those two. Also, a granulocytosis is the medical emergency that is in relationship to second generation anti-psychotic medications. Okay, all right. Okay, all right guys, we have been studying for half an hour. That is a very powerful study session. And we've just been going through different parts of different parts of QuickFacts. Mm, okay, let me ask you this and then I'll let you go, I promise. <laughs> when we talk about the herbal medication St. John's wort which psychiatric medication cannot be and should not be mixed with St. John's wort what do you say when we talk about St. John's wort which psychiatric medication should not be mixed with St. John's War. First person on the screen wins. Okay. All right. All right. All right. The correct answer is the SSRI. SSRI. Good job. Good job. All right. Okay, guys. I'm going to stop the study session because what I want you guys to do is I want you to sign up for the free trial of the V2. If you don't have it, if you don't have the V2, sign up for the free trial because I want to be able to go over the lectures and the free trial, that first section, and do that, okay? I want to be able to review that trial. I probably will just have like a trial study session for all of you guys who have the free trial and um, see how you feel about the information that was presented there. I'm also, uh, we're planning for our next major event. So if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, 
please subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get the notifications of when I go live. I don't always go live, um, or we don't always have the notifications on Facebook. Sometimes they're delayed, or it's just weird sometimes. So the YouTube channel is the best. Also, um, the free trial. The free trial, we don't have an ending period for the free trial. So you can be in the free trial for however long you need to be, and there is no credit card information. I don't ask you guys for any payment information for that free trial. So you can get into the V2, you can watch the lectures, you can take some quizzes, and you can also download the workbook for the free trial because it's in there. Feedback. What else did I want to say? Oh, let me just do, um, how can I get this book? I brought, I never brought the quick facts. Yeah. So all you have to do is you can go to the website, remarnurse.com. This book is in stock right now and you can pick it up from there. Would the new NCLEX have math? Yes. Then the next generation NCLEX will have math. They will have math. Yep. Let me just give you guys a quick Monday motivation really quickly. And this is just the difference between being a student and watching me in the next level. When I was in Aruba airport, there was this girl that was staring at me and I didn't, I didn't really pay any attention um, because I was trying to get my toddler together and catch this flight. So as I was walking back to the plane, she says, are you, you look like, and I was like, Remar, and she like, yes, 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 yes. She said, I used to watch you when I was in nursing school. So I'm like, cool, cool, cool. So I started talking to her, shout out to Tamia. And she says to me, I used to watch you in 2019 when I finished nursing school. So listen to this, guys. This, this nurse was where? She was on vacation in Aruba with me. We was on the same flight. And so I'm just trying to motivate you guys and encourage you guys that there are, there is, there will be so many different Mondays for you. You're doing this Monday now, right? This is what your Monday looks like now. But when you get your nursing license, your Mondays won't look like this. Y'all going to be in Aruba. I hope to see y'all in Barbados. I hope to see y'all on vacation with y'all friends, having a great and amazing time. And I thought that was just so cool because when we were in Aruba, Mark and I heard this couple talking about the nurses who got fake licenses, right? And so one of the ladies made a comment like, oh, she, did, did you find, did you know that the nurse that this person was, you know, taking care of or whatever didn't have her license? talking about these fake nurses and I'm just like man I just wish we could get away from this conversation but it's just following you everywhere right especially if you're a nurse so that was a negative for me I was so bummed about it because I'm just so over you know this discussion but to, to meet a licensed nurse who is vacationing and saying I used to watch you it made me think of you guys tonight so please, 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 please do what you need to do to take the next step to get your nursing license. At least as I'm going to Barbados after I pass the NCLEX. Man, that sounds so cool. That sounds so cool. Just island hopping and being able to do that. And you can do that when you become a nurse. A hundred percent. You'll be able to do that. So I hope you got I hope to, to meet you guys in the airport one day as well as you are vacationing with your family and friends and just having a great time and definitely stop me and say, I used to watch you. Say, I used to watch your Monday motivations and um, that would just bless my heart so much. So I'm gonna end this session. Your Monday motivation has been served everybody. And remember, remember, get in the trial of the V2. I want you guys to do that, all right? I want you to be able to get in the trial of the V2. Mark, can you can you say hi to everybody and help me? <laughs> help you what you need. I need help. People are saying amen. I just gave them the story of, you see what I did? I gave them the story of Tamia, who we met today, and okay. I told them how she said, I used to watch you, 
Okay. And now, like you said, she's on vacation. Yeah. In okay. Aruba. So she, yeah, she used to watch you. Uh, what back? She graduated. Or she got her license in nineteen. She, yeah, she graduated yeah. nurse school in twenty nineteen. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. She mm-hmm. Yep. Remember, she's been watching you for a while though. Uh, mm-hmm. and she's what from Houston, lives in Atlanta or something like that. But yeah. anyway, she was on vacation. I know. That's in what I told Aruba. Her. That's what I told her. And like we sent an email, like guys, get your license. I thought of getting a free trial so if you don't do that. If you don't do anything else, get that nursing license because your Mondays are going to look different. Their Mondays right now is with me studying, but they could have to me as Monday when she come back from Aruba. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a much better, much you know, better, much, much better, better Monday. But wherever you are right now is a good place because you are connected. Uh, and so I have to remember to speak so that they can hear me. Oh, uh, yeah. We got to get close. We yeah. got to get close. Okay. And I'll tell you, once you have your license, Ideally, you'll have more time for family. You know, of course, you'll be working. Yeah. You know, you'll have vacation yeah. and things like that. They, yeah. Um, but it's one less thing on your plate that, you know, that uh, you have to focus on. Mm-hmm. And so you can put your priorities where they need to be. Guys. Yeah. And they, yeah. and they did so good tonight, Mark. Everybody did so well just answering um, great questions and being involved. And so I know that. I've know, been watching. Oh, you've been watching? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they did so I've good been today. watching. I'm really proud. I've been watching. Even with, you know, us being in the airport and we wanted to prioritize you guys and say, let's just stop and let's just make sure that we do Monday. I'm Even if we have to do it at night, don't matter. We're going to make sure yeah. we get it done. So and sometimes the things that you want really do take time, you know, to achieve or just to accomplish. You told them that you wanted to go to Aruba for a long time. I did. Well, I didn't like, tell them this today, but no. I did. But now I did it. So it's a goal. Like yeah. 20 years. It's off the list now. Yep. So, guys, I will see you soon thank you so much for the birthday it was a wonderful it was a wonderful week thank you mark um and it was great having you guys along you know and... guys do us a favor for regina's birthday if you haven't subscribed to the channel on him. youtube guys subscribe That's right it. now in fact <laughs> you might have thought that you subscribed before but you're not getting the live notifications go ahead and hit the button again because mm-hmm. sometimes if you're not active they will take you off of the subscriber list so i want to make sure that you are subscribing following on facebook that's true so that you stay connected guys and tell somebody else this is amazing this is your year for inclex yep. inclex is changing guys and we want to be a part of that wave we want you to be a part of that thank you guys so much remember you can you will you will and you must must pass inclex pass inclex that's it now, let's, let's wrap it up. Make sure they know how to get to the free trial. I told them. I, told them. I yeah, want to see them. Shut this whole thing down. I, I want to see you guys in the, the plane free is taking trial. Off. Oh yeah, I know we do have to board. Um, but ain't nothing more important than you guys. Seriously, I I, I literally, literally, literally enjoy being with you guys. And I said we have to do Monday motivation. We have to do Monday motivation. I don't care if I'm on the airplane and I'm like outside of the airplane. No matter. <laughs> no, Mark said we'll get it done. So thank you guys so much. This has been the best birthday ever. And to end it with you guys. Uh, show her up for a second. Just a second. Show her up. Just okay. a second. Oh, Lord. Goodness gracious. Let me see. How do I do it? Just hold it. Okay. Just hold it. Okay. So I, so for this, let me show you guys the Delta Lounge and what we were able to do the live. Look at all these people in the Delta Lounge, guys. There's my mom. Wave, mom. Maybe she doesn't hear me. But look at all these people. <sighs> and we said, we do not care. We said, we do not care. We about to get this thing in. There's my daughter. Say hi. Kids. So when we say we consider y'all family, we consider y'all family. We take y'all with us everywhere we go. Say hi to the VMR nurses, Shiloh. <laughs> Sister for sure. Look, look at my son. You guys know the boys. Look at my son. We on location. Look at my son. It's a long day. <laughs> he did not, he did not want to leave Aruba. And so we've been literally flying. We've been packing and flying and just dragging our, our kids all over. But they know how they know the grind. So this is the Delta Lounge. If you haven't ever been in the Delta Lounge before, I do suggest it because when you're here, you get food. It's like a little rest stop. They have all types of food, right? Um, they do have an open bar, but I don't drink. But it's just a, a really great place if you are working. 
and you're a business professional with you which you guys will be you guys will be a, you know you'll be business people so when you fly you'll probably stay at a lounge like this let's just walk through the delta lounge oh. okay so well, that's it that's what i'm doing right now remar nurses my plane leaves in like 15 minutes so oh. i'm gonna wrap up and gonna get out of here but this is also another reason why i always take quick facts with me because no matter where i find myself i can just whip out that book and get to study this is monday mondays with remar behind the scenes thank y'all so much for rocking with me Bye, guys. See you later.